Okay, so hello Creative Assembly, I'm my name is Sky, and uh, uh, whoever's watching this video you're probably thinking, what the heck have you done here? Well, uh, I'm trying to represent a landscape. So what's going on in this landscape, you know, if uh, sort of flat land, you can do, you know, whatever you want with it, but this is the ocean, uh, this would be a stream, a river flowing into the ocean, this is one of the tributaries to that. Uh, stream that river. Here, this is forest. This is represent mountains. Uh, so you can imagine these are very high, difficult to you know, overcome mountains. Uh, these are the foothills. Um, this is the forest land that's just basically grown up. And I want this little black line to represent a a population. So you could say maybe a rebel population. But I'm gonna you know explore, explain that a little bit more. Uh, now. The anything that a population needs, or, or the things to realize that whatever a population has uh, to use, it's going to need a couple key things, uh, and those things are uh, water, food, resources. So, with that in mind, pardon me while I adjust something here. Uh, so, with that in mind you can think, okay, uh, if we have black to represent uh, the population center, red to represent a, a fortification or a military uh, emplacement of some sort, and uh, yellow to represent food, uh, because, and the water's, you know, right there, so the water's taken care of. Uh, and in fact, I think I'm going to go one step further and say, all right, uh, blue representing utilization of the water, you know, into the landscape. So, uh, in this piece of land, what, you know, what have the, this popula what has this population center done? This population center has, you know, a fortification, you know, a military of some sort. It has a food source of some sort. It has a water source. So, because of that, it can grow and exist in this little small pocket. Um, and it's kept from the rest of the river because of the big, you know, mean forest. Uh, you know, this is primitive civilization. Uh, and, but it uses another resource up in the mountains, uh, where it has another population center, which is supported by the lower population center. It has its military, it has its food, it has its, uh, and there's something else that they're, I'm thinking that gray would represent, uh, a religious, uh, uh, thing. So um, that's the extent of that civilization is that uh, it can utilize food resources in two locations, but it, it doesn't have, ac it's not us using and accessing um, like whatever else, like, you know, the you know, minerals from the soil to make, you know, metal to uh, outfit a, mil a military. So uh, and I'm just out of colors <laughs> in my, you know, push pins. But, um, so that's this, you know, one other aspect to, to think about. Uh, but I want to, you know, now focus on this little group down here. So if this is a group that's existing on, or this is a civilization that's, that is existing on the coastline, um, and let's say that it developed around a religious institution uh, so it developed a military, and it developed the, the, the food source, and it has its water. Um, so now, what can this civilization do? Well, it wants to increase its population, because something else I, want, I really want to think about, and, and Creative Assembly to think about for its future games, is populations, population sizes. Because this is a population that exists here. And so this is going to be a population that exists here as well. Uh, that population is going to be identifiable because of the, the roots. You know, as was explored in, in the, the most recent medieval games and the campaign games, uh, what, what's going on with population? Because I'm really thinking of how can you explore and exploit the, um, where you say, become a subordinate nation, uh, uh, What's the, what's the term? Well, it's like after you become an alliance, say, you know, hey, why don't you just uh, join me, you know? <laughs> or, you know otherwise, I'll, I'll beat the crap out of you. 
so and I'm thinking, how, you know, how can you have this population do that to this population? Uh, so, let's see. Uh, this guy goes expanding. Well, he just starts going, or taking the military out and going, do 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 do. Um, you know, the guy would say, conquer, conquer, and in these places that he conquers, you know, he can establish a settlement of some sort, you know, if there's no population there. Uh, once the population establishes, what are they going to do? Well, they, you know, depending on the guy in charge, he can decide, um, okay, I've just conquered, you know, I've just taken over three you know, pieces of land. The, and essentially, the land would be blank. The, there would be spots that, you know, you'd say that would probably make a good location for a dwelling. Like, okay, or, or I mean a, uh, a habitat, a community. So, okay, because that would just be most effective. So a community would spring up based on what you, the player, decided wanted to be there. So, okay, you can now decide, well, what I want there to develop in these communities. And, um, like, okay, well, let's... Uh, develop their food, or, or no, I say first thing, first things first, because, you know, you were able to move around and conquer that land fairly quickly, saying, okay, I need to move around, so I'm going to make a road connecting the three population centers, like, okay, um, now what's next? Well, I want these guys to be able to feed themselves, and uh, you know, like if you're like me, you say, "Hey, I don't care about the military, but uh, I'll just say, okay, you're you're a panicky sort." And you're like, okay, well, there needs to be a fort at both these locations. It's like, okay, now let's worry about food. It's like, all right. And last, don't worry about water. So, okay. Um, now, you as a player uh, pushing through, conquering, all that good stuff, you say, you come up to the river and uh, because it's downriver and the level of the river, you do, and you don't have the resources, per se, to cross the river. Uh, but I'll get into that later. So you say, okay, well, we can't cross the river, let's go north. Uh, to where we can you know, cross, so you go north. And um, at this point, there is a way you can cross. However, there is a rival civilization over there. So, you now realize, okay, I exist outside of, you know, the realm of somebody else's control. There's only so much I can do. Uh, and represent the enemy. So, they exist over there. They're like, oh, darn. Well, I guess we got a battle. We got a scrap. Or, do we just maintain peace? And at the same time, uh, since I'm a guy of limited resources, you know, I can't really maintain a military there. Uh, I need a military at my capital, and I, right now I realize I need a military here because I'm developing a city to basically take advantage of this harbor that's formed. 